just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. So welcome back to Coffee Time. It's a little dark because I'm actually outside on the patio today. First, I want to thank everybody who's been supporting the channel uh, financially and in other ways. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in supporting the channel, uh, please look at the links in the comments section below. Uh, Patreon account, you can donate a few dollars every month. You can go to the GoFundMe where it's one bulk amount, uh, whatever you choose. So I really appreciate it. It's made a big difference and it's keeping everything going. So I've done part two of the expat series and I've got a number of parts to come yet. It's being pretty well received. The views are good. The subs on part subscriptions to the channel on part one and two, I'm up to almost 70 new subscribers just on those two videos. So that's pretty good for me. Lowly channel for me. It's very good. So there's quite a few people new to the channel. Uh, I've made some changes in the playlist. So you might want to go and look at the playlist that I've set up. I've got one that's for expat uh, information going back a couple years on some videos. So you might want to take a look at that. Upcoming, what other parts do I have? Got how? when and who and plus there will be some other particular topics that I'll cover in the final part of this series. I hope you'll find it interesting. I've gotten some suggestions along the way. Actually every suggestion I already have planned but if you have any ideas uh, drop me a line, put something in the comment section, send me an email and if it seems like it will uh, be good information for a lot of people I'll include it in the series. I haven't done this in a while. I do it every month or two or three. Um, usually, I'll point out some particularly whacked out comments that I get. I've had really nothing, with one exception, I've had nothing but really good positive uh, comments on the channel. And so I'm going to share the positive with you for a change. On the video changes in Cuenca, Ecuador, uh, which got a tremendous amount of views for the first uh, three or four days, thousands. He said, this has to be one of your best, thanks. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate all the new viewers, and I was happy to do that video. It was a video I had planned for a very long time. This next one was a pretty good question. It was on, uh, I think, the last coffee time. If your health were not an issue, would you still be in Armenia or would you have stayed in Cuenca? Well, I have kind of answered that in the past, but if we're not an issue now, uh, which of course it is, scarred lungs don't go away, would I return to Cuenca? And the answer is no. I'm here now. I, I love it here. I always have wanted to come here anyway. And why I didn't has been explained in a few videos including um, one with a lot of personal information that's in that new playlist. But if I were still in Cuenca and I didn't have the health issue, what would I do? I probably would have gone with my original thought, which was to live six months of the year in Cuenca, six months of the year here in Armenia. And then at some point I probably would have moved here permanently. The hardest part for me in Cuenca leaving the friends I had. I made some very, very good friends. Uh, they text me almost daily on what's up and I, I miss them. I miss them a lot. I wish I could afford to just go back and visit. Um, in the future I'll be able to. Right now I really can't. Uh, so um, we just have to stick with texting but very dear friends. As far as Cuenca goes itself, I'd say I have a love-hate but there's no hate. Um, but I have a love-like relationship with Cuenca. Here's, this may not be true for you, it may not be true for everybody, it's true for me. When you first go to Cuenca, and for your first year or so probably, you're really enamored because it's a beautiful city. Uh, not everywhere, I mean you have your slums and ugly barrios, but 
To have a city with four rivers running through it and to have this beautiful El Centro downtown with a 16th, 15th, 14th century architecture, it's, it's stunning. Actually, what happened for me was what happens in a lot of relationships. That the things that are cute and endearing in the beginning just become kind of grating and annoying at some point. And that's what was going on with me in Cuenca. And one of the reasons behind the uh, idea of six months there, six months here, not necessarily together, maybe three months and three months like that, was the idea that you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder and maybe uh, it would cause me to appreciate more, but I made quite a few trips. I made a total of seven trips here while I was there and I'd get back and I would miss my friends, but uh, nothing changed about my issues with Cuenca itself. But what are those issues? What's old and quaint and beautiful remains beautiful, but it becomes just old. And after a while, the beauty just becomes just part of the backdrop. As you're living there day to day and you're going through your life, yeah, it's beautiful, but you're dealing with the everyday issues. And the busted up sidewalks and dodging dog poop and just there's so many things that just annoyed me about the place. The biggest thing, watching all the sour faces, uh, it's probably the single biggest thing when I go out for a walk there I come back was almost depressing because the nature of the culture is very stoic and so as you're going through Cuenca it's just dour faces now when I lived in Hiron it was very different people there were smiling and laughing and everybody's greeting you and it's not to say you don't see that sometimes in Cuenca but for the most part, you just see people with their head down and clutching their property and just plotting on to what they have to do. And that was just kind of depressing for me. So it's just a personal thing. Uh, I come here to Armenia and it's like in Hino. You know, I mean, people are smiling and laughing, bringing you into their world. And it's, it's so social that when you're somebody like me who tends to live as a hermit, it's good to have that exposure once in a while so you don't go down the rabbit hole to kind of draw you out of it. So, Cuenca is old and beautiful. For me, it just got old. And that's kind of a quote from a friend of mine. Uh, he had the same feeling. We actually were very similar in that. You know, you just get tired of twisting your ankle on broken sidewalks and, you know, in a whole realm of things that um, you know it just can become annoying so it's a beautiful city I will never regret living there I actually really liked living there I lived in some places that were stunning I'm actually happier where I am now this one was <laughs> the Fruit Loops another example intellectual property theft uh, very funny can't wait for the book uh, and this was very touching actually. The world's a better place because you survived. Um, that really kind of got to me. It was quite an emotional roller coaster those few years. You know, being told that you're actually going to die and you're going to die in a matter of months. And my brother having died the exact same way through his cancer, you know, I had no reason to doubt it except I, I didn't really believe it. But, you know, you have that. And then you find out that you have this miraculous cure and you're okay and you're not going to die. Going through that time period that was a matter of months and months and months, it just kind of, you know, plays with your head. You can't work, you can't, uh, you really, I, I couldn't do anything. I mean, I was bedridden for two and a half years. So there were so many changes and I, when I went to Cuenca, I, ne I needed to get out away from things. So that's, that's why I went to Quiron, that small little town of a couple thousand people. And that did more for me than all the psychiatrists in the world could have done. It really grounded me, that time alone, in a fairly isolated area. But I would go into Cuenca once or twice a week uh, for the most part. Comments like this is 
it, it's really it hits home it's very touching and um, this is from Charles he's been a big supporter in every way you can imagine and I very much appreciate you Charles Here's a video that goes back a couple years. Why not Colombia or Mexico? Thank you, sir. Another great video. Uh, I hope to meet you someday when I come down. Absolutely, I meet with a lot of people. Last month, I think I met with seven or eight people just in that month. You know, I try to make myself a bit available for that, which leads me to a little plug. Don't forget, I'm doing a consulting thing now. So if you need somebody man on the ground it's not very expensive the information's all the way down in the comment section this one was on my experiment with a two-minute drill the two-minute drill that i thought nobody watched it really was a bust for me i was very disappointed because i had a lot of work into lining up the first seven um, ones that i was going to do but somebody did watch it and he actually lives in Armenia. And this was, it's spelled Colombia, not Colombia. He says, right on point, my friend. I'm from Armenia and you got everything exactly right. I really appreciate your help on this matter. If, if you're not from here, you don't get it, but it's really a sore subject. It really is. It's, it's hurtful to people. So, um, I understand this comment and of course he said by the way I really like your two-minute drill and my reply to him is well thank you very much but you're probably the only one and here's one I'm not gonna read the whole thing but I'll leave it up here for a little bit this was a great video I've been in Quito for eight weeks and it goes on uh, not exactly graphic but I get the point and it was a video I did I think two and a half years ago on food poisoning and I had food poisoning while I was in Ecuador probably once a year or so. And so I talk about where it comes from and how you can avoid it. And it but it brings to mind a conversation that I got into with somebody. It was a gringo and he says, uh, I talked about the eye. On every restaurant table you find this uh, little bowl of semi-hot sauce setting out. And I said that you have to be careful because a lot of these are mayonnaise based and if it sits out all day, you know, that's, it's just a breeding ground for a problem and, you know, it's a good way to get food poisoning. And somebody, you know, it's like one of these know-it-alls, it's a, ah, he is not, I know for a fact it's all vinegar based and, it, well, it's not true. I mean, if you walk around Cuenca and you eat lunches in a bunch of places, you're going to see that actually the majority of them had mayonnaise in them and uh, what brought it up is one day I sat down I was in for a lunch with a friend of mine and I, we looked at the little hot sauce thing and it was actually bubbling they were bubbling I mean, it was so spoiled it was bubbling well imagine the person who maybe an hour before it wasn't bubbling yet but he ate that so there's certain things you want to avoid I covered it in that but it brought back the memory of that conversation where the guy just wanted to argue back and forth and it's like i mean how do you argue with that i don't want to argue with that if you don't want to believe that that's fine you know it's just obviously that he doesn't really live there you get a lot of people that look for information on the internet to try to go back and disprove somebody wrong except there's so much bogus information on the internet it's really you can you can make yourself look like a fool Okay, this one is on part one of this series. Hi Lauren, I appreciate and relate to your videos and perspective better than others I've seen. I've watched for a while and the print's kind of small and I don't want to look away. Again, you can read that. Very kind comment. But in this, it asks a question that's come up a few times and I actually will, I have in the past done some of this and you can find it in that playlist. But I also have a video plan coming up that's going to be a, a few weeks away on banking and getting mail. And I'll tell you, I don't want to make this a long diatribe, but as far as banking goes, I tried the banking in country. And you can do what you wish, and it depends on your circumstance. 
I do not recommend it for so many reasons. I just don't recommend banking in this country. Another comment on part one, how to be an expat. Great topics, looking forward to the others and blessings on you. And thank you very much, right back at you. And the last one that we'll do today is on part two of the last video. Well thought out analysis, great detail. Thank you, that's the kindest way to say that was really long and drawn out. And I know it, and I was kind of struggling with it because it could easily have been broken up into three parts. But it wouldn't have had a good flow, part one, part two, part three, when I'm talking about, you know, uh, how and where and why. We would have been where part one, subpart one, or part two, subpart one, subpart two, subpart three. I, I thought about that and I said, you know what, I'm just going to put it out in one long video. So I know it's tough to sit through a long video like that, it's hard to find the time, but these videos are for information and I think I kept it fairly information packed, at least for me. So on that note, I want to thank you again. Again, don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up are always nice, uh, please feel free to support the channel. To go to Patreon, the information's all down below. If you're coming down here, I have a link down there for booking.com where you get money back. Um, Airbnb, I think you can get up to $40 back on your first booking. So there's some money you can make on those links down there. And of course, whatever you get, I get the equal amount. So yay for me. So that's it for today. Part three will be out within a couple days. I'll see you later.